that's named Cooper. I feel like that has to be pointed out. Uh, and yeah. many and many people's dogs are also named Cooper. So, <laughs> yes, a very strange uh, what mixture a, there. What a twist! Odd coincidence, <laughs> indeed. So, this is this is what prompted my discussion on this particular story. Okay. The white woman who's recorded on video calling police to claim that a black bird watcher was threatening her in New York City Central Park last year said she felt she was backed into a corner. In Tuesday's episode of Honestly, a podcast by former New York Times writer Barry Weiss, the woman, Amy Cooper, said she had no other choice but to call 911 when the bird watcher, Christopher, or, sorry, not Christopher, Christian Cooper, offered her a dog, her, offered her dog a dog treat after he asked her to keep the pooch on a leash. So, I just want you to pay attention to the framing as we move through the different varieties of this story of how this is framed, okay? This is a direct quote from her. He's holding these dog treats in one hand and a bike helmet in his other hand, and I'm thinking, oh my god, is this guy going to lure my dog over and try to hit him with his bike helmet? She told podcaster Camille Foster. And if I end up over there, am I going to get hit by this bike helmet? Tuesday's interview was a departure from her initial remarks, after a video of the encounter on May 25th, 2020, recorded by Christian Cooper, went viral and drew widespread outrage as an example of police being called on African-American who was not committing any crime. Amy Cooper said then that she overreacted and was sorry. She told NBC New York at the time, When I think about police, I'm such a blessed person. I've come to realize, especially today, that I think of the police as a protection agency, and unfortunately this has caused me to realize there are so many people in this country that don't have that luxury. Woke enough opinion, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the podcast, however, she said, I don't know that as a woman alone in a park that I had another option but to call police. Christian Cooper declined to comment about Amy Cooper's latest remarks. He's previously said that he approached and asked her to put a dog on a leech, which is the policy for the Ramble area of Central Park. He said he's often in the ramble and asks for dogs to be leashed to preserve the area's environment and wildlife. He added that he carries treats with him to get owners to leash their dogs, quote, because they don't want their dog eating treats from a stranger. So keep in mind, again, framing here, they don't mention this, but this is a bird watcher who doesn't own a dog and is walking around with dog treats because he has such frequent encounters with dog walkers. And that's important, and I'm going to come back to that. And yeah. video shared on social media by Christian Cooper's sister and viewed by millions. Amy Cooper could be heard saying, I'm taking a picture and calling the cops. I'm going to tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. I still, to this day, believe that that comment was racist. However, I have a very different opinion about it than when I first heard this story last year. This is the part that really bothers me from the, from this NBC News does not know what happened before the recording begins. Well, do you not know or do you not care to know? Right, it's... <laughs> because they, both people have admitted to what happened in that encounter before. Like, they don't even have different stories. Was this article not made, like, immediately after the video surfaced? No, this is the current article. Based on oh. the new reaction to the podcast. And As that's they the could, like, make an edit to the article? It's literally a brand new article from August 4, 2021. Uh, okay. And, that, and the video was surfaced last year? Yeah, it was on the same day that George Floyd happened. Oh. <laughs> so, Interesting. I, I'll come back to that as well. After the incident went viral, Amy Cooper was fired by the investment management company Franklin Templeton and charged with falsely reporting an incident in the third degree. So she was actually charged with a crime here. Prosecutors dropped the case in February after she completed five psychoeducation and therapy sessions that helped her appreciate the racial identities that shape our lives and that, quote, we cannot use them to harm ourselves or others. That seems a little out of hand. Yep. Mr. Cooper did not wish to participate in the criminal justice process, but we determined that the defendant's offense wasn't solely against one individual, but was a threat to the community if allowed to go unchecked. This was said by the Attorney General in New York. I think that's important. Or Assistant District Attorney. Whatever. That's still Yeesh. ridiculous to me. The simple principle is that one cannot use the police to threaten another, and in this case, in a racially offensive and charged manner. Well, 
that would be true if someone wasn't already threatened in the first place. Right. And again, not a single mention in this entire NBC News article uh, about his comment. Did you notice that framing? Yeah, well, I mean, they did say that they didn't know what happened before, which probably implies that they didn't care to look. Oh, but they seem to know everything else. Oh, uh, I guess that's true. <laughs> Convenient. Um, given the issues at hand and Miss Cooper's lack of criminal background, we offered her, consistent with our position on many misdemeanor cases involving a first arrest and alternative restorative justice resolution, designed not just to punish, but to educate and promote community healing. In May, Amy Cooper sued her former employer, alleging the company did not properly consider her fear for personal safety before it fired her. She also alleged in federal complaint that Franklin Templeton terminated her based on her race and gender while failing to properly investigate the incident, which made national headlines. Uh, Franklin Templeton previously characterized that lawsuit's claim as baseless. Wilson Wong, who reported this, is a breaking news reporter with NBC News. Okay. I wanted to go through this article because it, this is what you will find on every mainstream article about this topic. And on the sub-mainstream, but into the far lefter sphere, you get commentary like this. First of all, important to note, this was written by Ray Alexandra, who is a staff writer for QCAD Arts and Culture and the creator author of Rebel Girls from Bay Area and a Bizarre Bay Area series. Born and raised in Wales. Uh, She's a music journalist, writing for Kerrang, SF Weekly, and Village Voice, among many others. So we have a white, born in Wales woman who would like you to know that she is not down with the Central Park Karen in this commentary. Unless you think this cake QED is some small outfit, when I searched for the news category on Google for this story after I listen to the podcast, which I'm going to get to in a second here. KQED is a proud member of NPR and PBS. Oh, damn. (laughs) Okay. Central Park Karen Amy Cooper remains unrepentant about Central Park Karen Ng. In God Just Shut Up Already News, that white lady who made an unhinged call to the cops about the man who was birdwatching while black is back. And wouldn't you know it, She's defending all that dog choking and racism she did in Central Park last summer. In case you need a refresher, this is what that looked like. That framing is important. Um, Yeah, well, that that one's obviously quite a bit more charged than the other one, I would say. Yeah, the other one's just conveniently um, leaving things out. This one is basically just trying to um, this is summed up in this paragraph this is what I was looking for this is this writer's opinion during the 80 minute podcast journalist Camille Foster offers several nuggets of info that the listener is supposed to treat as astonishing revelations but only offer broader context to the incident these include the fact that the 911 call Amy Cooper made was almost inaudible to the dispatcher on the other end of the line so she had to keep repeating herself in addition Cooper talks about a sexual assault she endured in her teens that she says impacted her emotional response in the park. Foster spends some time establishing that Christian Cooper was sick of dog walkers in the birding areas of Central Park. There's an audio clip featured in the podcast of Christian Cooper speaking at a community meeting on the matter. Foster also says he found two other people who Christian Cooper had admonished for walking dogs off leash who said they had felt threatened by him at the park. And then in parentheses, neither wanted to speak on the record. Well, I I wonder why this lady was literally, like, ran out of town and had her life threatened and had to, like, change her identity practically. Uh, I wouldn't go on the record either. Doesn't make it not true, but that's the implication that the writer wants you to think right there. Right, right. You know, all of which is interesting but fails to answer the most important question of all. Why did Amy Cooper stay in the park? With a man she says she was afraid of, and when he's specifically asking her to stay away from him, why did she opt to move closer to him when she had already retrieved her dog? And why did she call the cops instead of walking away when she had a clear opportunity to do so? We already knew the answers to all of those questions. 
Did you? I do think it's. I, I don't remember hearing an answer to the one of the. Uh, why did she opt to move closer to him? I do not remember that. One. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But that's my I think that's my, a my fair question. real problem is saying that we already knew the answers to all of those questions. Do you do you understand what was going on through the minds of the two individuals? Are you like a trained psychologist? Do you have all the details? No, you just want to write something to stir up something. Right. Right. Hey, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. I can't read that name. P Ducks. P Ducks. Sup, man. Or girl. Hey. Thanks for the follow. All right. So now you've heard all of that. And I'm going to give you, uh, Liam, a chance to just give your initial thoughts on this story. And then I want to share some more information with you. What do you think? Yeah, you know, I think, I, I will say, I think there's valid um, points of view on both sides, like equally valid. Like, I don't think it's like a very clear one-sided, like, um, you know, this person's in the wrong here. Um like I said, I think it's a fair question, um, questioning of the woman for both the reason that obviously she pulled the race grenade right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, um, she got closer to the man when um, he was recording her. I think both of those are very fair questions to ask, especially about a woman who's apparently afraid of the guy. Um, I, I, I guess that's one thing that does make me a little bit suspicious about the thoughts and motives behind what she's saying. Um, but I, I guess furthermore, I do think it's it's very convenient for both of these media articles to leave out a lot of information regarding, you know, her point of view um, when, you know, we're supposedly talking about unbiased news, which I, I don't know if Q, Q, well, KQED oh, or hey whatever. Pierce. Um, I don't know if they actually claim to be an unbiased news source, but... Um, uh, this is I, in the I, commentary I, section. NBC Right. This is in the commentary section that KQED piece. So no, it's not. It is definitely biased. Okay, well, I How, then I think. But good. But I want you to understand that you will find nothing outside of the Barry Weiss podcast itself that actually takes the true other side of this, which is that you know, yes, she said something dumb, but she was trying to gain power back in a situation where she felt threatened. Uh, you will not find a single article that takes that opinion. All of them uh, are somewhere all of them are somewhere between she's definitely a Karen who just called the cops in the sky because he was black and uh, all the way as far as she's a racist piece of shit. Like that's the range that you get. Right. So To back yeah, up a minute, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me give you some some things that I learned in the podcast, and and I encourage anybody listening to listen to the podcast for yourself. It's about an hour and a half. It was some incredible investigative uh, journalism by Camille Foster. Honestly, um, uh, Mr. Cooper had apparently had two other incidents in the park recent incidents with other people where he said something to them and said the exact words that she said that he said, which would make sense because he admitted to saying it to her in the park. And those two other incidents that were reported by other people were that he had a bike helmet in one hand, dog treats in the other, he does not own a dog, and he says, if you're going to do what you want to do, then I'm going to do what I want to do, and you're not going to like it. Which is exactly what he admitted to Gail King in that CBS interview. That happens before the camera begins rolling. And I think that that's really, really uh, important. Um, he was six days prior to this particular incident. He was on a community call, kind of like a Zoom with other leaders from the Central Park, you know like committee or whatever. And he actually mentions casually that he has a really nasty reputation with dog walkers in central park. Okay. 
And uh, Pierce says bird watching in Central Park is hardcore. Being someone who lives near Central Park, yeah. Um, I, I think that's kind of interesting. I have no doubt. So that's that's a point I'm going to make here in a second. But uh, six days before that, he says I've been developed a reputation as a dog hater uh, in the park, but we need more enforcement regarding leashes in the Ramble because that is where he does his bird watching is out in the Ramble. Okay. Uh, and apparently leashes are required. Essentially what this uh, Amy Cooper woman was saying is that the dog runs were closed and she needed her dog to get some exercise. So we have somebody not following the rules of the park. Okay. Yeah, that's sort of condemnable, but like not that big of a deal. And then we have a guy who seems to be taking a somewhat relatively mild but vigilante approach to this problem. I have big, big problems with the vague, ominous threat that is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I want to do and you're not going to like it. Especially said to a woman? <laughs> alone, right, yeah, I, alone in a park? That kind of context, it, it, it's definitely a much more complicated situation than just... You know, what meets the eye. So, the story comes out on the same day that you have the George Floyd news. And they are essentially paired together as both evidence of our continued race problems in the United States. And it's time for a reckoning on race. They were essentially, in a lot of news media, presented as like two stories showing the same thing. The same big problems that were coming, right? Well, here's, here's my genuine opinion on that. Uh, there's no way, to this date, that you can even tell that either of the two incidents had anything to do with race. Like, I'm still agnostic about that point. Now, in her case, she does make the comment... Before she calls the cops, she says to him, I'm, I'm going to tell them an African-American man is threatening my life. Now, I'll be honest of what I believe she was doing there. I believe she felt that that threat would be sufficient to get him to back off. She felt like he was taking a threatening posture to her and was trying to get the power back in that situation. Uh, I think she was in a heightened emotional state. And if you listen to the Barry Weiss podcast on Honestly, which dives into all of these details and more, it's an hour and a half long. I mean, they, they cover way more than I could cover here, right? I, I can't say that you're going to fully uh, exonerate her, as I did not, as Camille Foster did not, right? But you're going to come away with a very different character of the situation um, and be a little bit more, I think, forgiving. And that's that's the crux of the story. 